Um, explantation is, I guess, a natural progression from breast implantation, but I think that's becoming more popular for lots of different reasons. Now, implants are never forever, and some patients Is that decide, really true? Like, truly, you, yeah. you have to get them out at some point, so we need to get that into our head when we go in for that surgery. This yeah. is not forever. You will have to come back to replace them or remove them. Yeah. At some point, you're going to need to change them. And that could be because of a problem with the implant or it could be because your body has changed around the implant. You've had children, your, your weight has changed, your age has changed, and with it, the breast has changed. So what looked great 20 years ago or 10 years ago or even five years ago no longer is, is doing for you what you'd like it to do. So that the, takes us to explantation. And lots of women have decided now that they just don't want that foreign body, that silicon implant inside their breasts anymore. And so that's, that's, that leads to a whole population of patients now who are requesting explantation or removal of their implants. So the conversation we're having today is about, I guess, the elective explant, because there are mm -hmm. a lot of explants going on in an emergency setting where there's been a leak or a rupture or um, some kind of uh, allergic reaction or um, from the patient. But what we're talking about is a personal choice that's being made that I no longer want to have my implants in and I want to explore potentially other op opportunities, procedures, advancements in plastic surgery that can still give me a nice silhouette, a great outcome, but without a foreign body inside me. And I want to talk about two things that, um, you know, we've talked about a lot and you're a specialist in, one of which is fat uh, grafting. So using the patient's own fat uh, uh, to create tissue in the breast cavity. And the other thing that goes kind of hand in hand with that is creating a scaffolding via an internal bra. Um, so I don't know where you'd like to start, which goes first, the chicken or the egg, but I'll let you take it away. <laughs> Oh, good on you. Thank you. Um, so the way I think about it is the implant served a purpose at some point and then removing that implant is then going to detract in terms of shape and volume from the breast, uh, potentially irreparably. So you're, you're in a bit of a bind. You don't want to leave the breast looking deflated and sad and empty as a result of having had the breast implant. Um, and so, as you rightly point out, what is the alternative? Well, some patients, and not for every patient, some patients can use their own body tissue. And you harvest that um, fat, which is the body tissue I'm talking about, by way of liposuction. The fat is then treated differently. It can be treated as sort of macroscopic fat. It can be treated to make it into microscopic or even nano fat, um, according to the level at which it's going to then be injected back into the breast. Can to you explain to fullness. us what those three types of fat treatments are for, for the layperson? Yeah, absolutely. So ultimately, they refer to the size of the fat particle. So the macro fat is the, is the larger um, bumps of fat, I guess. And they, they, you need the fat to survive once it's injected. And each of the different types of fat has a different sort of a survival characteristic. And so depending on the outcome you're trying to achieve and where you're injecting within the breast and what plane you're injecting into, whether it's very superficial and up and under the skin or whether it's slightly deeper down within the subcutaneous fatty structure of the breast, you, you, you can use different fat or fat that's been processed in different ways to create a different effect. And, and you effect process is, that, so is it one surgery? So they would come to yeah. you, have the liposuction, get the tissue and the fat, you would process it within the surgical treatment period. Is that correct? Yep, absolutely, yeah. It's all done within the one operation. And so you, you're removing the, uh, an implant, that's the explantation, and then you're making the breast, you're revolumizing the breast, you're reshaping the breast, but now without the implant, rather using the patient's own body tissue, which is the fatty tissue. And am I correct in understanding that However much you harvest and um, use to build up the breast tissue where the implant used to be, you're going to get a, up to 50% loss in fat after the yeah. um, transposition of, of the fat into that breast cavity. Um, yeah. Is that correct? 100%. Yeah. Or uh, 50%, I should say. <laughs> so that's, you're spot on. 
So the way that it works is that it's transported into the body. It looks, you know, voluminous and quite full to begin with. Yeah. And then it metabolizes. Is that what happens? Yeah. So there's a degree of attrition of that injected fat. And then what's left after, say, oh, maybe 12 weeks is what you'll be left with. It's a procedure that's often repeated once or twice. So patients might have two or three rounds of fat grafting. And every time you add to the fat that you were originally added to, you, you preserve more of the additional fat, if that makes sense. So if you had quite substantial breast implants and you had them explanted, this yeah. may not be the surgical remedy for you because you've got big cavities and you won't be able to fill it with enough fat. Am I correct? That's right. And you're not injecting the fat into the cavity because the cavity is just an empty space. It will collapse down and the body just makes it part of itself again. The cavity disappears over a period of days. So you have to inject the fat into the living tissue. Right. So depending on the size of the implant that's removed and tissue factors, so how elastic the patient's tissues are, how much recoil you can expect, then it offers a greater or a lesser opportunity to use the fat in the first instance. So you really have to tailor it. It's not just one size fits all. Is there any um, like potential uh, downside other than the fact that you may need top ups? Can you reject your own body's tissue? Is that possible as a, as a negative um, downside to this procedure? Yeah, you don't reject it, but if you overdo it, so there's a natural sort of tissue tension uh, volume that your body will accept. And beyond that, you will detract from any further injection. In fact, you, the fat you've already injected will not survive. So there's a definite skill in knowing how much is enough and how much the tissue will tolerate. And you can take it up to that point, but you can't push past it. I feel really tempted to have a little sideway conversation with you at this point, because you were talking about the importance to really know what you're doing. And I think that there's been, you know, a lot of conversation in the Australian um, surgical um, fraternity and circles um, about the skill of the doctor, the qualification of the doctor, and you are an Australian plastic surgeon. And I, I'd love for you to explain to us what the difference is between your qualifications and that of a cosmetic surgeon um, and why some of these uh, newer or complicated double surgeries where you're doing a liposuction plus a breast explant and then uh, the rejuvenation with the fat grafting, why that might require someone who is potentially uh, more skilled, more trained? Yeah, thank you. That's a really good question. Um, look, plastic surgeons, uh, it's a recognised subspecialty of the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons. And on average, it takes about 10 years to achieve that qualification. So... You know, it's, it's a very highly competitive, highly sought after um, and very strenuous training um, program. And at the end of it, you are essentially equipped to deal with almost any plastic, reconstructive, cosmetic, surgical problem or patient that, that came across your way. And then obviously experience and work and practice and, and time builds upon that foundation. Now, there is not really a recognised um, subspecialty of cosmetic surgery. It's, it's sort of, um, it's something that the lay population have latched onto because a lot of elective procedures or discretionary plastic surgery procedures are referred to as cosmetic procedures. So you can, you can have gone through GP training with a basic medical degree and a basic medical degree is a Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery. That doesn't mean you've done any meaningful surgical training whatsoever. But using that as, as your um, ticket to ride, you can then set up a shingle saying that you do cosmetic surgical procedures. And that's been the case, unfortunately, in this country um, for the longest time. And hopefully the ACCC investigation and um, other um, unfortunate events have precipitated um, a real looking at this. And it's really under the spotlight at the moment. Hopefully things will be better. Uh, for ultimately for the patient's benefit moving forwards. How much can we rely on this to, to show a change? Because again, you know, we've talked about this before and I, I always like to um, be as realistic as possible because it, 
any surgery, any procedure, even any injectable, you really have to understand that it, you know, if it was a miracle, we'd all be doing it. So there are yeah, definitely right. some limitations to absolutely everything that's available still. Yeah. Um, how how much will it lift? How much will it rejuvenate? How long will it last for? What's what's the correct and realistic expectation around this? Yeah, great questions. Um, look, I think the utility of this sort of a technique is dependent on the skill of the of the operator who's who's purporting to use it. And part of the skill in using it isn't just the, the nuts and bolts and, and knowing where to put it in and how to put it in, but how to choose the patients that will benefit most from it. So if you don't choose the right patient, it's not going to have the, the desired effect or the effect won't be as long lasting as you might hope it would be. Whereas if the patient choice is correct and the, the operation is done seamlessly, well, then the outcome should be very long lasting. Nothing's forever, but it should be very long lasting. And is it, so am I correct in that it's lifting mm -hmm. um, as well as supporting? So it will give yeah. uh, not an immediate because you're waiting for the collagen and elastin to form around the matrix of the sheet or whatever. Oh, no, it will have an immediate effect, pardon me. The immediate effect is the effect of the, the, the lift produced by the, the mesh. Okay. And then the mesh is, for, for me, the ones that I use are not permanent. So you're not leaving something in there that might cause a problem down the track. But during the, the next six to 12 weeks, while your body dissolves and digests that, that mesh, it's also laying down collagen in its stead, in its place. And so does it improve? Because collagen, laying down collagen, to me, as I understand it, will improve with time. So if you've had the mesh and it's stimulating a collagen response, will you see an, a further lift? Will you see, um, or does it plateau at some point? In no, it, it plateaus. Yeah, mm -hmm. it plateaus. There's a sheet of collagen there. There's the support there that wasn't otherwise there. But um, a, good, a good analogy would be um, laser resurfacing of the skin, say. And you can look great and glowing after a couple of treatments, but that's not, that's not it for the rest of your days. You know, a year, two years later, if you haven't re-stimulated that, that surface collagen production, then the effects will start to fade. So the effects will not hold the breast in the, the position that it's in at the end of the operation for the rest of your days but there will be collagen there that was never there before that will help support it. So even during the aging process, even though things will continue to change with time, you've still got that extra support there. So I guess the flip side is where would it be without that? It would be a lot worse off, I'd suggest.